And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800. Eight six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. How exciting is this? The debut of Flash Friday 2008. This is it, baby. Yeah. Very nice. Flash Friday. Finally, it's here. Ooh, we. <laughs> Do you know I've met people who don't know what Flash Friday is because we haven't done it, you know, since last October? I, I met people who have not ever heard it or heard of it. Although I will say many more people have heard about it than haven't because today I was tooling around Burbank. Don't ask me what I was doing in Burbank, but I was tooling around Burbank today. You ever know when you're going to want to do a little uh, afternoon karaoke at Dimples, you know, so I get a couple of songs in before I came in. So I'm tooling around Burbank today, and uh, there I saw numerous cars with their headlights on hours before the show was scheduled to begin, which was pretty amazing. And I don't think the lights were on because of the thick, noxious smog that was uh, hanging over Burbank today. <laughs> Some areas look like nuclear winter. But uh, I, there's a lot of people out there who are anticipating Flash Friday. Very exciting. Now, for those of you who have never heard Flash Friday, you are not in the know. Here is what Flash Friday is. All of our listeners, all of our loyal listeners, turn their headlights on. You turn them on right now. And the reason you turn your headlights on is to show the other listeners, the other radio listeners who are in other cars passing you by on the freeways and the highways and the boulevards and the parking lots. It's to show them you're a loyal listener. It's a way that we all know who the other listeners are. It's kind of cool for you to drive around Burbank seeing all these people with their uh, headlights on. Loved it. So you put your headlights on and show that, that you're a loyal listener. What, what that does, first of all, you'll, you'll be telling people your loyalty to the show and to the things we talk about here. You'll also see who the other listeners are. But then we give you a, another bonus. And that is this. The ladies who listen uh, know that when they're driving around on Friday, if they see a guy with the headlights on, their job is to reward the guys who turn the headlights on. By showing their knockers. We flash you, you flash us. And then what happens uh, on Flash Friday is that uh, many of the lucky listeners who've seen bare breasts call in and report to us, you know, what they've seen. And you can call us at any time here and report to us at 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Uh, I, we're very anxious to uh, to hear about all the first day uh, breast sightings, and if you've uh, had one, uh, you need to let us know about it at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. All we ask on Flash Friday, if you are new to Flash Friday, or if you're just a moron who never pays attention, all we ask is that you do not call up and say, "Tom, I've been out here for six minutes now, my headlights on, I haven't been flashed." Shut up. I will hang up on you if you attempt to tell us that uh, I'm on the 210 freeway, Tom, and I haven't seen any breasts. I got on two exits ago, and I haven't been flashed yet. Forget it. Don't be a baby. 
Leave your headlights on. It will happen eventually. It won't happen in the first minute or two unless you're extremely lucky. But uh, the idea, the, the primary idea of Flash Friday is showing the world that you're a Tom Likas listener. There's nothing like going over. There's an overpass over that goes over the 405 freeway. And there have been uh, Fridays when uh, our show was a rerun, but it was still Flash Friday. And I drove over uh, the overpass right by the Holiday Inn there near Skirball Center. You look down the freeway and there were hundreds of people with their headlights on. There was a sea of headlights. There's nothing like looking down at the freeway and seeing all those headlights on. Because it tells me that uh, there's a lot of people listening out there. So show your loyalty to the Tom Likas show on this first Flash Friday of the summer of 2008. I'm here all summer. And so we're going to beat the drum for Flash Friday and try to get all of our listeners at least one viewing this summer. All right, ladies, it's your job to uh, help out the Tom Likas show any way you can. There is a certain number of cool chicks out there. And they... uh, they are fans of the show, and they understand what I'm talking about, and they know I'm not a misogynist. They know I don't hate women. They know I just hate bitches. But cool chicks are not bitches. They're cool chicks. So remember, if you see a guy with the headlights on, show him your cans. Put them on display there, girls. It's that simple. Okay, on this first Flash Friday of 2008, wide open telephones on the top like a show. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything we discussed on the air this week. Quite a week this week, we had Bill Murray's prenuptial agreement, which you can still read by going to our website, blowmeuptom.com. There it is, Bill Murray's prenup. And I uh, told you that I had newfound respect for Bill Bill Murray. I thought that was great. Uh, We talked about the debate on sexy baristas in Bonnie Lake, Washington. The fat and fuglies are out protesting. Get a look at some of them on our MySpace, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. There they are. The fat and fuglies, the -the over-the-hill gang, uh, there they are, protesting hot baristas. You know, uh, there's a number of people in the Pacific Northwest which is saturated with espresso stands that are now trying to get a leg up on the other espresso stands by having chicks wear pasties or wear bikinis or whatever. And all the fat and fugly espresso uh, uh, stands are all upset about that. Talked about that. We talked about the uh, film review of the god-awful Sex and the City film and how it uh, it started uh, veering into social commentary about uh, there being something tragic or something wrong with the likelihood that very few men will see this movie. And I, I think it makes perfect sense that men are not going to see that movie. We could talk about that again if you like or if you didn't get in to talk about it. And finally, we uh, kicked our week off on uh, Monday of this week. We kicked our week off by talking about it, a piece in the Boston Globe called Oops, Did I Remember to Take My Pill? And it talked about all of the excuses women give for not taking their pill, their birth control pill, of course. We can talk about any of these, anything else we talked about this week. We can talk about things we didn't get into this week. By the way, we also uh, spent a couple hours talking about Barack Obama this week. Now that he uh, looks like he's going to be the Democratic nominee for president. We uh, did spend some time on that. We got a lot of calls about it. That's also welcome. Uh, But we can also talk about issues we did not get into this week. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Now, all you have to do on this Flash Friday is start dialing. Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. First Flash Friday of 2008. This is the first one. It's the 11th summer in a row of Flash Friday. That's right. And by the way, we didn't even ask for these. I want to thank the ladies who are sending. (laughs) They're sending uh, flash photographs to us because they know I can't be on the freeway. I think that's just fantastic. So, ladies, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm looking at two girls right now. Uh, send these to you, all right? This is one of the perks of the job. It's not bad, 
Let me uh, send these out. Hang on a second. Get, get these out to you here. Yeah, we have uh, women sending um, flashing photos to us. Naked pics. Yeah, yeah, okay, there it is. I'm doing this on the fly here, of course. Because uh, what the hell? That's that's how the world works now. Everybody's online. Everybody is sending stuff. Everybody is... Uh, here you go. Okay, here it comes. Oh. <laughs> I see some of the other things I've sent you that are still stuck here on the computer. All right. There you go. I'll send that over to Art. Yeah, look at that. What do you think? Nice knockers. Yeah, no, I, I think they look good. Uh, hmm, we, we want to encourage more of that. This is very nice. Oh, very nice. By the way, bounteous knockers there. These are not A cups. It's very good. All right, uh, by the way, our email address, if you'd like to send these in, uh, send them to Tom at blowmeuptom.com. We'll definitely take a look. I won't be rating you, though. Don't be writing it saying, will you rate me, Tom? No, I will not be rating you. Here's how I'll rate you, okay? I will uh, <laughs> I will pull your panties down, and I will, uh, you know, stick the temperature probe in there and see, uh, you know, if you're... How high a Fahrenheit level we get to. That's that's about it. You do it like I'm doing a roast beef or something. Then you'll know how I rate you. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's go to our wide open telephones here. It's Janice on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi, Hello Janice. You. Thank you. I just wanted to speak about the birth control article you were talking about last week, which you said... Um, you had not met a woman yet who was not on birth control, but if she were to get pregnant, would get an abortion. Wait, 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 wait. What did you just say that I said? Uh, you, you, I've, met, you, I've met many women who are not on birth control. Yeah, but you said if they were to get pregnant, that they would not have an abortion? No, the ones who would have an abortion are the ones I've had sex with. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say that. Well, after hearing you that day, I was, I am one of the ones that if she were to get, who is not on birth control, and if she were to get pregnant, would have an abortion. So I thought about it, and I am, on your behalf, I was like, well, why am I not on birth control? It would be a stupid thing not to be on. So after that day, I decided that I should get birth control, and after hearing you, you inspired me to be on birth control. I love that. I just wanted to say thank you. Very nice. If you're on birth control, then we know you're not lying. We know you don't want to have a baby. Exactly, exactly. Sounds good to me. I just wanted to say thank you very much for that. I'm uh, very proud uh, that that was the outcome, and I appreciate it, Jess. Thank you. I love you. Can you take me out old school? Of course, darling. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Marie. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Flash Friday. Hello. Hi, Tom. Always Hi. a pleasure. I know. <laughs> I have a bit of a situation that I need your expert opinion on. I've been dating my boyfriend for two years, and I'm 30, and he's 30, so we're not children. But I've just found out recently that um, he's been having to defend me to his parents since the day one. They don't like me for whatever reason. And I'm trying to figure out, I don't want to make him choose between his family and me, but apparently um, they just don't think we're right together. So now um, I I don't know quite how to deal with it. They're saying all these, they're putting ideas in his head that I'm going to get pregnant and trap him, which is totally not going to happen. And I just don't know quite how to deal with uh, a family that's so controlling. You can't. I can't. No. You know, I've had this conversation with people I've dated, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes they wonder, you know, why we don't have more of a relationship or, uh, you know, why it doesn't uh, advance the way they want it to. Uh Uh-huh. And here is what I say about that. I've learned the hard way, okay? Every person is a package. Okay. Unless they hate their family and don't talk to them. 
Mm-hmm. Or they fall, had a falling out with all of their friends and don't talk to them. Mm-hmm. Or unless they stop talking to all their friends because they're dating you. <laughs> um, people are going to listen to the people they know and trust the most. Right. And that is not you. Uh-huh. I see. So and it will I, I, never be you. It'd be wasting of wasting of my time, even if their opinions, you know, aren't aren't even close to being true. Doesn't matter. Does, does, I mean, you said he has to defend you, but you also said they're putting ideas in his head. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, putting, if he is so defend, he's so willing to defend you. How could they successfully plant an idea in his head? I I couldn't tell you. Well, yes. Well, you can. There is an answer to that. And the answer is that the family does have influence, and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And so my recommendation to people, and it sounds harsh, is that you date them as long as it's fun, and then when you decide you need something more substantive or you decide you've had enough, you move on. Mm -hmm. You'll never, ever, ever, ever fix that. Oh. Because you can't, as I always say on this program, you can't change other people. Right. You can only change you. Yeah, that's what they, they say. You know, they're like, people don't change talking about me changing whatever it is I need to change. And it's, it's over stupid things. You know, they, they like the parents love to have people over to their house, oh, you know, several times a week. And just because I don't want to go over and drink and party, you know. Every weekend with his parents, I'm a bad person for that. By the way, he is split on that, and, and he may defend you to them, huh? but to a certain extent, he does. He agrees with them. Yeah. Right? Well, you're probably right. I, I think, you know, after, if we have a, you know, a fight or something, he'll go over there and open up about our, our relationship and tell them all the bad. Has he done that? The good. Has he done that? I suspect it. He has because, at least, you know, they've thrown out weird things like, well, you're just too high maintenance for him. I said, what do you mean I'm high maintenance? Well, you go and get your hair done uh, that costs $100. I said, I get my hair done that costs $100 every three months. That makes me high maintenance because I like to look good and take care of myself. But they heard that from somewhere. You're right. Exactly. They got. They have the details of stupid things somewhere. Or, or, right. Which, by the know, way, by the way, it's not just them. Now you're finding out how he feels, which he's not telling you. What does that say about your relationship? Right. Now, I've been questioning lately. I mean, I know he's been lying to them over certain, you know, stupid things, just stupid, insignificant things, like missing a day of work because you're sick or something. So I don't know how much of the truth he's telling me versus, you know, he's lying to his family. Darling, forget about the lies. You know for a fact that he told his parents that you're high maintenance. Yeah. Did he tell you that you're high maintenance? No. He always says right. he likes it when he gets when I get right. all that. So think about that. He tells you that he likes the way you are, and then he tells his parents you're high maintenance. And then, just to undercut your relationship, they make sure to repeat it to you. Yeah. So there's a lot of poison out there, and your boyfriend is 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 part of the problem. Sounds like it. So you're not gonna fix this better just to walk away that's what i've always done well put it this way i haven't always done it but uh there came a point when i started to realize people don't live in a vacuum Mm -hmm. they love their parents in most cases Mm -hmm. they love their siblings they love their best friend and their second best friend right and they know and love these people more than you yeah no matter what they say of course so if somebody has a problem with you and they're telling it to their parents and then the parents are using it against you, yeah. they're all complicit. Yeah, you know, they're, they're nice to me to the front of, you know, to my face and they're the greatest people to me. But it's, I Not if they're telling out. you you're high maintenance or not. Yeah. That's not nice. No, that's only because I've actually just recently confronted one of the family members and was trying to figure out what I have done. So now you're having confrontations with the family. I mean, this is a they lot worse than... Me. They won't If I'm... Uh, I can't go anywhere where they are now because I'm, I'm being alienated. So he, they're making him choose whether he wants to spend time with Why are you or still or... there? I don't know. You don't know? This has just all recently come out within the last 
two weeks. It's probably time you do something about it. And by doing something about it, I mean voting with your feet. Yeah. You're always right. Well, well, thanks, Tom. I really appreciate you taking my call. Can you take me maybe, out? Maybe he can that? find somebody who gets a haircut at Costco. <laughs> I don't know if they're doing that yet, but it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You go you have your dollar seventy five Hebrew National quarter pound hot dog, and then you get, get a haircut. Else. All right, with free uh, <laughs> twenty ounce refills. Yeah, <laughs> and a haircut. Well, I'm sorry. I like to look good. Obviously, it's a problem for them. So. And one thousand fish oil capsules. <laughs> Kirkland fish oil capsules. Love that Costco. They're the best. Yeah. You're, you're the best, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Good luck. I appreciate the call. Like it. Like 1 800 5800 Tom. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. It's Flash Friday 2008. The first Flash Friday of 2008. Headlights on, men. Headlights on across North America, around the world. If you're going to see on the internet, headlights on. And ladies, if you see a guy with the headlights on, you know what to do. Show him your goddamn knockers. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? How Good. are you? <laughs> Great. So, um, I got married last year, and um, I, I'm i 33, and so... Um, you know, I'm, I was settled in my career, and um, but that's the, I was a single mom, and um, I decided to get married, and I married this guy from overseas. He Originally, he was looking for someone living in the U.S., and um, he, you know, my, my aunt lives overseas, and so she, um, you know, she said, oh, he's such a nice guy, blah, 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 and she, um, she said, just get to know him, and maybe you'll like him, and you know, so we got to know each other, and then he came over here on a fiancé visa, and uh, and we got married, and now we have a baby, and um, this whole year <laughs> has been, um, well, not what I've expected it to be. So, um, he's been abusive, and um, he's not, you know, I'm, I'm making... I make I make more money than he does, and he contributes financially, but um, I pay most of the bills. And um, you know, I I pretty much called because that last phone call with the family, like he um, is really concerned with um, sending money to his family, and um, I just I feel really resentful because um, because I make more money and I pay most of the bills and, you know, I'm, I'm responsible. I, you know, I take care of our, our family first and he wants to take care of his family overseas. And, um, you know, my, everyone, my mom and my aunt and everyone's telling me to get out of the situation. And it's that's just, after they told you to get into the situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot they yeah, know. They what was that? A lot they know. Yeah, and uh, and it's I really I'm kind of really angry towards my aunt who introduced me to him. But you know my I have another aunt who lives on the East Coast, and she's she's absolutely you know she's telling me get out of the situation, get out of the situation, and it's just really hard because um, you know we do we have a baby together, and um, you know it's just really really. But hard. you hardly knew this guy. I'm sorry. You hardly knew this guy. Yeah. Why do you have a Why do you have a baby with somebody you hardly knew? You know, married and um, and I already had my son, and and he didn't have any kids, and he wanted to have a baby. But you hardly so, knew this guy. Yeah. So that was a mistake. <laughs> I mean, why would you have a baby with someone you hardly know? Right. I mean, it was just like we were married, and we we got married, and I thought, you know. I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. But don't you uh, understand? You hardly knew him when you married him. Let's start I with mean, that. You right, hardly knew I mean, Did you know him at all when you married him? I did because, um, you know, we met in person and then we, we uh, got to, you know, we talked online most of the time. That doesn't so. mean anything. You know what? The biggest liars in the world. The president of Nigeria, by the way, has an instant message for you. <laughs> yes, he, he would like your uh, social security number and your PIN number. <laughs> 
Yeah. I've, and I've if you send email. those in, he's going to put $168 million in your checking account. I, I've seen that email. <laughs> I know. Well, you so know, why, would you, why would you think that talking to somebody online tells you anything about them? Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew, like, I know I've never taken people, you know, I've gone to those online websites, and I've never taken those per- people seriously, but because my aunt knew this guy, and he grew up... Oh, yeah? Did he beat her? No. Oh, and she didn't know him either? Right. How did she I mean, meet him? Did she date him, too? No. She How did she meet him? He, he was a, a family friend, like, they were neighbors, and... um like everyone in the neighborhood knows each other. It's a, it's a very small town. So, so well, you what know, was you an illegal that, alien he, doing living in a small town in the United States? Oh no, he lived overseas. Not my. I, I have more than one aunt, so I have one aunt that lives overseas and one aunt. Why are you? This is getting too complicated. What country is your aunt in? Let's cut She's, to the chase here. She, my aunt lives in Bethlehem. Bethlehem, Israel. Mm-hmm. So you, you got a mail order husband essentially. <laughs> Basically, somebody you don't know. Yeah. And why was he desperate to get a green card in the United States? He, um, the situation's so bad overseas that, um, darling, you know, there's darling, no work. I yeah. don't, I don't want to appear in any way to be racist. Mm-hmm. I just want to make sure you checked out all the possibilities. You know those guys on 9-11, they were out at discos beating chicks and stuff before they flew the planes into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon? Uh, remember that? Um, yeah. I, 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 I for even a se- yeah. You know what that part of the world can be like? For even a second, did you consider the possibility that there must be a reason why this guy, of the millions and millions of people who live in the Middle East, this guy needed to get to the United States to get a green card? Uh, well, no, he's not like, I mean, he's not. He's an abusive not, guy. Yeah, but yeah, not a terrorist. So. <laughs> How do you know? I mean, he came, he originally, he wanted to come here just to have a better life and, you know, but. Why is like, that your problem? I mean, I just, see, I, I was, and I'll, I never want to get married again, but originally I just. I really wanted to get you married. You were so desperate to get married, you'd marry anybody. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, we were, I was attracted to him. I would marry anyone because but I, 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 I've been attracted to lots of people that I don't ever marry. Right. Why did you need to marry someone you hardly knew? Um, I wasn't, I, I, he was, he, I was introduced by my aunt. So I trusted my aunt. And well, what I did she know him. about him? I mean, she's known him like she's known him his whole life. Like, really? So she was little. aware that she must have been aware of the other people he's beaten. Oh no! So you think this guy never had the idea to beat anybody until he met you? No, I I know. See, the the problem with him being abusive is is a huge one. But I mean, did your aunt like, did your aunt tell you about the other people he's beaten? No. Do you believe he beat it, other people before you? Yeah. Would it I be do. safe to say, using geometric logic, that your aunt did not know this guy? She saw him walking down the street. She did not know him any more than you know the average person on your street. That's true. But you went ahead and you were so desperate to be married by 30 or whatever that you <laughs> took a flyer on it. Yeah. I mean, my main thing is how do I get out of this? I mean, how I know do you I get, need out, to of get out of it? Yeah. How do you get out of it? Well, first of all, by having a baby with the guy, you compounded the problem. Mm-hmm. Because you increase the likelihood that he will become approved as a citizen. Oh. Uh, because now the- he has a kid that's an American citizen. Right. All right, that's number one. Number two, you would have to go for, I, if I were you, I'd get an attorney, dear. Because okay. for a divorce, you need an attorney anyway. But you need an attorney with some little extra uh, expertise. Because you okay. need to let the uh, the INS know that this guy's an abuser. Okay. You, oh, by the way, why haven't you called the police about that? Um, you know, I just, it, it's, I didn't want to... I didn't want to complicate things. And Darling, they couldn't get more complicated. You married somebody you don't know on the recommendation of your moronic aunt who claimed to know somebody that she knew nothing about. 
Right. You went ahead, based on instant messages on the Internet, married somebody who clearly was misrepresenting himself. Then, before you got to know him as a husband, you went ahead and had a baby with him. How much yeah. worse can it get? <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get out of it. I mean, the like, point is, why wouldn't you call the police? I know. I know my brother said the same thing. Well, He's and you, by the way, your brother knows you better than I do. Yeah. So doesn't that tell you something? Yes. <laughs> I know. So first thing I need to do is get a lawyer. Right away. Okay. Do you have a lawyer? I don't. You've but never I, had an insurance claim? You've never bought real estate? Um, well, the last lawyer I used just retired, but, and he was really good. But. Why? But doesn't he have someone he can recommend you to? Couldn't you contact him and say, I know you're retired, but who's as good as you? Hi. Um, yeah. I can, yeah, I can definitely call him. And That's who you out. call? That's who you call? Okay. And uh, you're still living with this man? Yeah. Because he's planning to leave, uh, he's planning to leave to go visit his family uh, at the end of this month. So that's when I thought it would be a good time to. And do you own a house together? No, we rent an apartment. How? When is your lease up? Oh, uh, next February. Next February. Yeah. And uh, he is going to be leaving when? Um, at the end of the month, like June. At the end of June. I see. And he's going without you, too. Right. Probably consult with Al-Qaeda or something. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, not him. No. You no, know him really not. well. Yes, I know. <laughs> hang, um, on, hang on a second, Lisa. Uh, Scott, okay. what did you want to say here to Lisa? I want to say, what an, a complete idiot. This is exactly what's happening, and I don't know if I can say this, but it's the pussification of America. Girls like this that think nothing of them except for of themselves and nothing of the greater good, and it's all about me, 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 and getting a, a play a play date for your kid, <laughs> while letting some dude into the country that you have no idea what he does. You still stick with the guy after he beats you or whatever he does to abuse you. You should have been gone the second that happened. But no, you're too busy because you got to have a, a little play date for your kid. You don't know him. And my guess is you probably should talk to some authorities about checking into this guy, about loosening his way into a, a, a green card and citizenship. And you have nothing. You have no, you don't, nothing about this guy because you needed a, a, a play date. I should point out that she, that she hung up in the middle of your call. So uh, hopefully she's listening and heard what you had to say, Scott. I would think so, Tom. It's pro it's too much of about a me, me, me deal. Now, I understand me, me, me on a few needs. But for the greater good, you got to go outside of a country to find a, a, a husband to make a play date? No, but uh, uh, look, I believe in going outside the country to find women to date. But yeah. to get married to somebody before you even know them? Really sad. No. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't marry somebody that I grew up with. If I'd only started seeing them within a year. My own brother did that. He goes and he meets a gal. Dates her. Well, he, he knew her from high school. They knew each other. I run into her, pass the number on to him. He's dating her. Six months later, they come to me and they tell me they're getting married. The first thing I said to them was, you're both idiots. It'll never last. How long do you figure it lasted, Tom? <laughs> Hardly at all, I imagine. Yeah. A year and a half. Right. year and a half. Oh. And... I just don't understand why people think that, you know, you can just, it's too quick, easy, and in and out. Why not just date? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Scott, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. Just amazing. Just amazing. Phil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Phil. How are you, my brother? Doing great. Good. Dude, I've been listening to you since I was 12 years old in Detroit. I love you. I'm faithful to Like Us 101, and I'm calling to report three flashes. Really? Really. One, two of them happened about six months ago. It wasn't Flash Friday yet, but it was Friday, so I had my lights on anyway. I, uh, I'm a military policeman. That's what I do. I'm an MP for the Army. And we were driving our convoy up the 101 to Sacramento from Long Beach, 
and uh, two cars of chicks passed our convoy and flashed us. Love that. And then just now today, I was on Ocean Avenue and Washington in Venice, and uh, this lady's, like, looking at me on her bicycle, and she's like, um, dude, you have your lights on? I totally love that. The Tom Likas Show.